Hello, I'm Nikki Raby and welcome to my podcast. As you can see from my bio, I am a lover of the portfolio career. I'm an actor, a coach, writer, speaker and podcaster. I'm based in London and I'm a partner to one and a mum to two. Right, I'm on a mission to help you to create a business or a brand on your terms. So even if you're just starting out and you have no idea where to begin or you know you want to go to that next level and you're feeling all the feels, you're in the right place. I believe we should be able to create success that feels good, that suits your personality, your goals, your circumstances and makes you money. In this podcast, I want to share stories, conversations with people who have created their own gig, how they started, what they've learned, how they actually make money, and make sure they're always full of actionable tips. And you'll also find some mini episodes with me. I've coached over a thousand people in my coaching practice now with a focus on personal branding. So you can expect lots of chat and strategy around goal setting, getting visible, making money, creating opportunity, saying yes, saying no, the mindset, all the things. Because I know that it can be tough. Building your own version of career and life can be the biggest self-development journey. Oh, and uh, I promise I won't say the J word too often. Everything we discuss will be in the show notes and on my website, nikkiraby.com. And also, if we're not pals on social media, come and find me at Nikki Raby. A bonus, you don't have to ugly cry alone anymore. You're in great company. Also, if you love this kind of chat, please let me know what you want more of. And don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, all the good things, because you know what? It's time to make stuff happen. In today's episode, I'm talking to Emma Harrop, who is a mum of three boys and also the owner and director of Velvet, which is a large, beautiful, independent retail store and it occupies two and a half thousand square feet over two floors. And it's full of fashion, homeware, lifestyle products, so much great stuff. She's also a property investor and a runner. Now, I really wanted to talk to Emma about this lovely position that she holds in the way that she has a physical space, but also she has a really strong branding online and a real connection with her customer, something that I feel is missing quite often. So this episode is really great. We talk about building a team, going through life stuff, but also providing purpose of where you go next and how you navigate that next chapter. Also really realising when it's time to expand, when it's time to go large or go home, but really trusting your own instincts. And I also talked to Emma about being a leader and what that means and how you can lead by example, but also build rapport with your team as you move forward. It's a great one. I hope you enjoy. Hi, Emma. Welcome to the podcast. I'm so excited to talk to you. Oh, hi, Nikki. It's uh, great to be here. Oh, tell me about, I mean, I've just been hanging out on your Instagram whilst I've been feeding my child, but um, what do you do? Uh, Tell everybody if they haven't discovered you yet. Oh, well, um, yeah, I'm Emma and I am Velvet, which is a rather large lifestyle store in Hove, which um, next door to Brighton. It's two and a half thousand square foot, so it's pretty big. We've got two floors and we sell clothing and homeware, interiors, gifts, shoes, accessories. Um, it's the idea about the store is that it's really beautiful to look at, but also very shoppable mm. and very affordable. Um, they're all Scandinavian brands just because I love their style. Um, so the idea is that you go in and you feel comfortable and you feel like you could shop there for hours. People do hours. <laughs> and, um, they bring their lunch. 
Yeah, <laughs> well, they literally meet their friends in there and bring their dogs and what have you. And yeah, you can buy a top for 25, 30 pounds, um, a dress for 40 pounds, but it's all, I think, you know, beautifully done. So people feel inspired by it. Um, yes, and I think the exciting thing is that I'm 20 years old, my business next year. So What? You me. weren't an overnight success? Really? <laughs> No, Nikki, I wasn't. <laughs> no, there's been lots of tears <laughs> along the way. Yeah, well, so let's let's go back there. Tell me, okay. tell me how it started. Were you that person like I was, even though I, I don't have a retail business now, sort of stacking shoes in your room, inviting people to come to your shoe <laughs> shop, and all of that? Well, I'll be honest with you. Both my parents had shops, and when I worked for them when I was at school, I was like, oh my god, this is so boring. <laughs> I never want to work in retail. That's just a bit, you know, that's rubbish. Went off to uni, um, was quite, now I look back, I was quite entrepreneurial at uni. I put on fashion shows and um, for the fashion students and actually left university with more money than I started, which is unusual. Um, and then I went to work in marketing, worked in the city, worked in the city and hated it. I hated the the culture, you know, 20 odd years ago, it was like stab people in the back. Do we <laughs> Only one woman at the table. Oh, it was awful. So um, and then my husband, my ex-husband and I, we decided to move to Brighton. And I was shopping in Brighton thinking, oh, my God, the lanes. They're really groovy, but I can only buy joss sticks and... <laughs> shit trousers yes. and you know I was like where are all the nice shops working in London there was nice shops and I remember going home and seeing my mum and saying mum there's no nice shops and she said open one and I'm like wow yes so actually with my mum's help that was it opened a tiny little shop had not a clue what I was doing um but because we were so different to all these sort of incense selling shops at the time we had a queue. We had a queue out the door. People loved the fresh new stuff that we I was selling. And uh, I sold out all my stuff in three days. It oh, was my insane. goodness. So it was a mad panic to stop the shop, facing up to London, getting suppliers. You know, it was just crazy. Um, didn't have a day off for, like, I think it was 50 days. And then day 51 was Christmas Day. And literally collapsed. You got like, ill on Christmas Day. Collapsed, I was so ill. Um, but I knew, found something, found my thing and, you know, we'd made money and it was just, it was it was such hard work though, Nikki, I won't lie. Yeah. yeah. I, I just love that, I love it when you get that idea and you have to go for it and figure it out because I think this comes up a lot with my clients that people feel like they've got to get everything in order and sorted before they even start to move and it's almost like saying that you're going to go for a run and all you end up doing is folding up and rearranging your gym kit and it's like no you just got to put your trainers on mate and start moving and shaking because that's how you learn um so 20 years on did you did you sort of think that you would be where you are now um yes and no because I loved it I knew from day one I'd found my thing and because I'm passionate about looking after customers but also having lovely product um but 20 years is a long time been through a recession uh, I grew the business to like four shops and 30 staff when the recession hit. Pretty much lost most of it. Um, you know, that was a terribly tough time, making people redundant. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, having been through all that, learnt and learnt and learnt and kept the big, big shop in Hove and completely transformed the business again. So you have to reinvent yourself. You have to change every season, especially in fashion. I think it's learning on your feet is the only way um and I couldn't imagine doing anything else now to be honest so yes I think you have to especially in a business you have to love it but you have to reinvent yourself yeah how do you know what that reinvention looks like and how do you I guess get the nudge that you're like okay it's time to shake things up 
or where do you sort of get your inspiration from? Because I know that when we talked before that it's a really crowded marketplace, especially with, I mean, Instagram is amazing and, you know, it's great that there's so many options out there now. I mean, you know, going down to Scunthorpe High Street where I grew up, grew up there was Topshop and New Look and I think Little Woods as well. Like there was yeah. no, there was no internet. There was no online shopping either. So if you had to, wanted to go anywhere, you had to go on a bus for about four hours. So it was, it, the choices were so limited, but I guess now in the saturated market, how do you keep shaking things up? Well, we work very, very hard at that. Um, first of all, we put the customer absolutely first. Um, there's, I've got a team of 12 and they all do different jobs from marketing and social media and helping with buying, merchandising. But the key job of everybody is, is customers. You don't really get looked after in a high street store very well. We know our regulars. Um, we know their names. We know their dogs' names. Their dogs know where the dog treats are kept. We know <laughs> the neighbors. Um, we have people come in two or three times a week because one way of keeping fresh is that we have new stock arrive every day. Mm. Um, our regulars love that. But we have obviously visitors from everywhere. So we really, really look after them. If you want to just mill about on your own for an hour, that's wonderful. If you need somebody with you for an hour, we also do that. We do personal shopping. So I think the key is that we genuinely love our customers and I only employ people who are warm who can really look you in the eye be interested in you care about what you're going to buy you know maybe suggest things that will really suit you look after you I think that's what you don't get on the high street and also attention to detail we spend hours and days planning our windows making them look beautiful making the shop look very aspirational inspirational but the point is you can buy it you it's it's a good normal price point it's the same sort of price point as marks and spencers or even a bit lower sometimes so it makes people feel we want people to feel comfortable there's you know sofas for the husbands it's all it's what i call it is retail theater yes. so people think wow look at that display oh i could do that oh oh and they get excited that i've always from day one want people to walk into the store and go oh that's the noise that i like people to make yes and I, you know that life is we were saying this before we started recording life can sometimes be a bit tough or you're pulled in different directions or like this morning I was going to the family go on then off you go to the park quick yes. let's go and you know we're doing all these things and I think especially as you get older and as your your body changes or you have babies or you do different things that the shopping, I mean, I used to mill around in shops for hours and hours and hours yeah. as a teenager in my 20s. And I worked in London, so I would just, you know, head to Oxford Street for three or four hours in the evening, like with nothing better to do. But these days, it has to be a bit more like get in, get out. But also, I don't necessarily know myself anymore. I, I am at that point where I'm like, right, I need some, because I'm doing a lot of speaking, a lot of um, camera stuff. I need some good stuff. So I think you're just onto something so much of somebody being able to sort of take care of you and sort of see in yourself maybe what you haven't seen just yet. I think that's the thing. We have a lot of women, you know, like yourself, they come in, oh, I need to look nice, but I'm feeding or oh, I'm going to all sorts of things a wedding a funeral or I'm going for a new job or I've got a hot date um and we look at them as a whole person what they're going to feel comfortable in I think it's listening the two girls that do the personal shopping are amazing they really listen to what the customer wants and I think that's really important and we never force anything on anyone because it has to be your obviously your decision as well but we can advise and I think that's really important yeah, definitely. And sometimes that thing of like just wang it, you know, it sounds very Gok one, but like adding a belt to something yeah. or like think yeah. about these shoes or you don't have yeah. to wear weird corporate heels with this. You could wear like cool yeah. trainers or boots or, you know, whatever. It'd be great. Um, how, of trainers for that very reason. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, how is it managing so many different people and being that 
leader, so that sort of a person who is driving, who is strategizing, who is sort of the face of the, the business, as in, you know, you're you're driving the ship or riding the ship. I don't want, know what the phrase is, but yeah. but also having that we're a team and we're all in this together and you being relatable and you showing up and showing all those lovely qualities that you want in your staff of being kind and warm and all of that how do you manage those two things well I think becoming a leader or a team manager is something that I've learned an awful lot about um, over 20 years and I think the key thing is to listen is to listen to what your team are telling you and take their point of view very, very importantly. Um, I am super organised. I would say that's been a great skill to have because in you know leading a team, um, it's good to be really organised. It's really important to be able to pick on people's strengths mm. and oh just tell me about what organized looks like to you because i think sometimes people go i bought the stationery so that means i'm yeah. organized but actually that's the only the first step so what kind of things would you share on practically that people should do oh i'm a list maker but mm. i'm also a, a list maker that is achievable list maker so i have like a plan the week and I'll put some things in different days I feel you know I've got three children as well and I have to be really organized in order to get them doing whatever they have to do um I think it's planning Nikki I think it's writing down but it has to be achievable there's no point writing a list that is never going to (laughs) finish delegation so I write a list and then I think well this person can help me with this and this, you know, the manager can do this, the social media person can do this. They And they all really, really work together as a team. I think what you were saying about team building is the thing I've taken to heart the most. I do, you know, I, I pay well for retail. They all have fruit and coffees and we have nights out. They have amazing discounts on their clothes, flexible holidays. And we do we had our own awards ceremony a few weeks ago and they all won an oscar we called it a velvet actually <laughs> no business um and they all won an award for the contribution that they bring to the business mm. um and it's so was, important to value people so, it really is yeah well i mean to be honest i probably valued i i, I adore my team you know that I feel like they're my daughter sometimes that we're very close and sometimes I have to realize that I'm also their boss and not their mum (laughs) (laughs) but yeah it's it's you know we've had a wedding uh last week which was wonderful in the team there's a baby on the way and I think it does sound corny but we're a bit family like but obviously we're a business as well and they all know that and being a team it means they work for each other and they work for me because they don't want to let anyone down it's a hard culture sometimes to really grow, but I think we're I think we've done really well and the customers know that. They know yes. that we're all very close. And you can smell that when you go well, not literally smell it, but you can feel it in the atmosphere. You can yeah. feel if yeah. people are being taken care of or what the yeah. environment's like and um yeah it, it just adds to the whole experience. What do you do to keep yourself topped up as a leader because you've got three kids as well you know which you're and I hate this thing of like how do you juggle it all but you know there is there are people that need feeding or you know I mean even (laughs) saying this to my mum earlier I was like my god going from three people's washing to four people's washing is epic and Luna is so tiny how is she creating this but she she makes a lot of washing I'm sure she's exactly but it's all of those sorts of things of how do you manage all of those hats that you're wearing but also keep yourself topped up on a day-to-day basis um I won't lie it's not always um easy and I think it comes with um I think again you learn along the way Uh, my kids are 10 13 and 16 now so they're not in the baby years but they um the teenage years are I think equally as frightening yes Um, I have to just try and balance out my time. Um, I've always tried to work school hours. Um, Yes, I might work late in the evening on a Sunday morning, Sunday night, but I've always tried to do be at the pickup from school because, you know, the business is wonderful, but my boys are my world. So that's, that's what I've tried. 
I keep myself topped up. I, I go running and mm-hmm. I didn't discover that till after my third baby when um, it was purely for my mental health, um, just trying to move um, and not, you know, cope with uh, the baby blue. Well, I had postnatal depression with the previous two children and I wasn't going to have that this time. Oh my God, running saved me. I was absolutely rubbish, but it didn't matter. And I've kept that up for, it'd be nine years now. Mm. And yeah, I run marathons now. So that's amazing. Great. I would like to think that I've got a marathon in me. I got really fit before having um, Luna and was really running some big distances. And I've just started again now, slowly but surely. But oh, gosh, so you're, busy, yeah. you're right. That that sense of for your mental health. And oh. I, I know myself when I'm holding space for lots of different people, whether that's people I'm working with one to one or friends or family. And I'm kind of creating all of this stuff. Running is so good for just allowing the ideas to flow. And, you know, sometimes it is hard. I mean, certainly getting fit again after having a baby. It's like, I am that crazy woman on the hamster teeth going, come on, kids, you can do it, talking to myself. But, yeah, it's so good. But you've got lots of family in the business as well. How how do you manage all of that? (laughs) Well, my mum is my accountant. Brilliant. 77 and the most glamorous amazing woman ever she works three or four days a week for me and she's just incredible so she's always been my inspiration um my dad's just retired at 84 um he's he always just he was brilliant he just helped in the stock room and generally chatted a lot to us um but yeah so I've, i've do yeah i look after my parents as well but they've obviously given me a lot so it's yeah, and my son, uh, my 16-year-old son, he works in the stock room. And all three boys um, do the waiting on um, – we have three or four shopping nights a year. We might have 500 people come to each event. So the younger two are dishing out sweets and cakes and the older ones pouring hundreds of glasses of Prosecco. So, yeah, it's definitely a family business. Um, and I always wrote my sister, my poor sister – she has to come along and work at all the events as well. And I think people really like that. They like that it's one independent family business. I think in this day and age of these big chain stores, people really appreciate that, I think. Totally. And what you're showing your boys as well in terms of work ethic and um, it, things don't happen in an overnight success and, and watching actually what you do. And I always found that with Oscar when I started working again, even though he was, you know, five or six months and I was doing bits and bobs here and there, I would always tell him where I was going and yes. you know make it a positive thing. And like, you know, I'm sure he was looking at me like, what's she talking about? I don't need to know all the details but when we came back together it was always I wanted to share what we'd both done in our days and being able to be positive about it because you know with the best one in the world we all need to create money in some kind of shape or form as well and as much as I think there's enormous amounts of guilt especially for mums sort of figuring out how you fulfill your own dreams but also are there for your children but if you can look at it in a really positive way there will be I guess a a happy medium um one thing I would love to talk to you about is how your business has changed because I know we were talking about it just before the call that you know you were saying when you got divorced you got that kind of mojo of sort of shaking things up and um you know your business really accelerated how how what did that look like well getting divorced was something I never saw coming to be honest so we were together 20 years and had three gorgeous boys and didn't see it coming. Um, it completely blindsided me. I mean, literally, I think anyone who's been through that and suddenly to become a single parent was really tough. The boys do have a good relationship with their dad, but suddenly being on your own and uh, having to run a business with um, it was 10 staff at the time and have these three young boys who were obviously very upset and confused. Yeah. I had a very awful six months, you know, I definitely hit, you know, one of my rock bottoms. And it wasn't till the following Christmas when I'd had Christmas with the boys and I was sad and they were sad. It was all very strange. Um, that They went to stay with their dad for a few days and 
I thought I can't really get much lower. I've got to, I've got to do something for them. Yeah. And it was literally I just sat on my own in the living room for three days and wrote and wrote and wrote and completely came up with a new business plan. Mm. Oh, I've got goosebumps. That's yeah. I've <laughs> been in that situation too, my goosebumps. friend. But I wrote it all and I thought, right, I'm going to do that for them because I want them to see that mum can come back and she can come back stronger and she can do this. And also for me, because I wasn't happy. Um, so I, I went in beginning of the year and I said to the team, right team, I'm sorry, guys, I'm just going to completely change everything and we need to do this for all our jobs and for everything. And they were amazing. They were amazing. So um, I work with Gemma, who does the buying and marketing with me. She, we changed all our suppliers. We did a new shop fit. All the staff were retrained. We went on loads of social media courses. We literally changed everything that was. It was a huge risk. And it was a lot of work. And like you, I told my boys step by step what I was doing, why I was doing it. Mm. And yes, two years on, we've trebled turnover. Whoa! Um, I know, especially in this market as well. No, I know. I'm so. I am. You know, it's quite emotional talking about it. I'm really. I am really proud. And I think the thing that got me is I had a card. I think it was a birthday card of my eldest son, Oscar, and he said, "Mum, you're back. I'm so proud of you." And that was it. I felt like. You know, it, I won't lie, it's been super hard, but actually I I did a speech to a group of women the other day about adversity, and I said, I have to say, the divorce has almost made me, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I'd want to go through it. Um, you know, I'm happy now, and the boys are really getting there, but my God, it just made me think, right, you can do this by yourself. Mm. You can, if you believe in yourself, you can do it, and I think it really gave me the kick up the backside to to do it and now I'm rather chuffed I'd say Nikki totally and I think I think there is stuff that you know there is a big life stuff that goes on sometimes but going back to that belief of breaking it down and just saying what do like Oprah always says oh my goodness I can't believe we've got so far into the podcast and it's the first time I've mentioned Oprah but you know (laughs) what do I know for sure and I think that's where you have to go immediately when you're because when life throws madness at you the temptation is to completely slide down a wall like Pat Butcher and just weep in the street and you know did a bit of Pat Butcher I won't lie totally yeah and we and that's that can be good but we can't stay in that place for yonks because it just you know we've got families to feed and do all of that sort of stuff but I think going back to like okay what are the key pieces and writing stuff down is so key because I always think that when we all live in our heads it can be really hard to get that clarity because then you're going oh my goodness have I paid that money for the lunch thing or have I filled out that form or have I paid my council tax or whatever it might be there's you know that's when it gets really hectic but um how do you see the business progressing now and what does how because you don't sell online but what does your social media presence do for you oh it's huge that's absolutely huge so two years ago we really dug into the world of instagram we were doing it but half-heartedly um so yeah Gemma and i went on training and we had help and instagram has really really been a huge huge help with the business we post every day it's it is planned ahead um we have themes we do stories every day or every other day about products we don't have like an enormous following we have over six thousand but those six thousand people live in our area Mm. so that's key they're proper they engage with us they come running in with their phones oh this skirt i want this skirt where's this skirt um (laughs) We have DMs all day. Oh, I've seen this one. Can you save me this? Can you save me that? So it, you know, um, one of my team spends three or four hours a day doing, getting all the things for Instagram. Um, We tell our story on there. We tell them that we're a a family business and we talk about who's doing what in the team. 
And then every Saturday morning, the Saturday team, they try on loads of outfits and that's always our most popular. We have thousands of views on that one, what people, wear, you know, what they want to choose that day. It, it's just, and it's also quite natural. I think, you know, we're not a big corporate, we're a family business and Instagram, I can't say enough how, how important it has been to us as a business. Um, people always ask us to sell online. We've tried it a few times, but we feel we're shopkeepers. We yes. can't offer what we do in the store. We can't look after your dog or your baby or help you with your clothing on an, you know, on a website. Um, a thing that is makes us do so well is the fact that we turn our stock really quickly. So there's always new exciting things every day, and by the time they come in, they you know they might be gone next week. So it's it's not something that you can physically put on and then take off on your on your website. So we've decided not to do that. Focus on Instagram and being the best shopkeepers. And yes. um, and the other thing about having new products all the time is that. If you buy a dress from us, you're very, very unlikely to see it on someone else. And I think that is a really nice thing because sometimes if you buy a dress from Zara or, or wherever, <laughs> you might see it on other people. I've been on Hindus and there's been four people like dressed exactly the same. And it just, I, and it gets to the point where it's like, how drunk am I or am I actually <laughs> yeah. wearing the same outfit? But you're so right. And I feel. I feel that's a really real key learning because sometimes we can see what other people are doing online because we're exposed to everybody's living rooms, bedrooms, businesses, offices, whatever they might be doing. And we see somebody having success and we'll go, OK, cool, we'll do the same. Yeah. But unless that actually works for our business, our goals, our personality, our circumstances, it's not going to work. And I always get a bit cautious when people say, I'll give you my exact blueprint or my template or my script, because you're right. It has to feel good for you and you have to know what your business is or your brand is so you can keep delivering in that way and, and stick to your values and what you're known for I think you have to enjoy it and I didn't really enjoying when I was I, I wasn't enjoying doing that whole online business that's not my thing I like people yes uh, although it, you know it might have earned us a bit more money it just wasn't us it wasn't the business it wasn't the brand um I think we like to think of ourselves as a destination place like a bit like a hotel where you go and have a really nice time but you can buy clothes there so I like that about that. And I think you have to, again, I've learned over the years about my strengths as well. Yes. So I think in any business that you want to do, or you have to just build on your strength. And like I said before, if, if you don't love it, it's hard work then. Totally, totally. And that sort of sense of, you know, things that just like they appear from straight out of thin air. It, it's just not the case. There's so much behind the scenes that people don't see. And yeah, it's, um, it, it takes work. It, and I hate that word, the hustle, but you know, you, you reap the rewards by consistently showing up and, and doing all of the things. Um, what would you advise to somebody who would like to do what you're doing and not necessarily the 20 years ago version of you but somebody who goes I'm in a cool place in Manchester or Leeds and I've seen what you do and I would love to do something similar obviously paying you commission or franchising yes. or something like that but what would you say in terms of um what they need or what they need to consider I think the biggest biggest mistake I see um new shops opening all the time that they make is they buy um products that they like right um, I think it's that's good because you've got to have good taste if you're a buyer but you've got to really think about your customer who is your customer what are they going to like how can you appeal to a broader range of customer without trying to please everybody yeah you have to buy for your target market in your area. You have to buy for that the people that come through the door. You can't can't stick to what you love. That helps, but you really need to think about your customer and put them first. Um, I would suggest, you know, don't spend a fortune on your shop fit. You can make a shop look very beautiful on a limited budget. I think you have to start small as you possibly can mm. because the overheads in retail 
are frightening. They really are. They are insane. Business rates, etc., are just bonkers. So I think start as small as you can, learn. I mean, you see some really good businesses that have started on like market stores or pop-up stores. They learn their business yes. before they might open a bigger store. I think that's where people make the mistake. They go in large and then they haven't learned their trade. You're right. I'll just say on that, um, I was on a, a panel with um, Pippa Murray, who is the founder of Pippa Nut, the peanut butter brand. Oh, okay. and- yeah. yeah, it's amazing. And she was just saying um, how she went to a farmer's market first and sold it. And she got that um, those touch points with customers of them going, oh, my goodness, this is amazing. Can I just buy 12 pots immediately? And then yeah. there were some people that were like, that's disgusting. <laughs> that's <Yeah>. awful. <laughs> and so it was very obvious who her customer was and really understanding them in that way. And I think sometimes... Um, especially with online brands it's like we can all spend our time almost polishing the shells fiddling with the website adding bits or you know taking photos or writing inspiring quotes but you have to get in with your customer you have to figure out what they need what they're all about and get to know them and what they're looking for I think that's absolutely crucial that you have to think customer first, what do they want and don't spend a fortune. And that's dread pop. You can polish all those things as you go on, but you, you're so right, Nikki, you just sort of have to grab it in, go out there. It's frightening, but you've got to do it, I think. Yeah. Uh, one, yeah, one question on that is how do you manage that fear? Oh, gosh, I always think back to when Drinking. I first <laughs> shop the first day and, like, trying to work out these credit card machines literally I just wanted to I think I actually did run downstairs and hide when the first customer came in (laughs) has anybody Um, seen Emma um well um it's again you just have to deal with it you just have to crack on I mean even today I get you get nervous you know I was doing a speech the other day you get a bit nervous about it and then when you've done it you think oh I'm proud of myself I've done it so it's just it's you can live in your comfort zone but I think it's really healthy to get out there and do it sometimes and you might think oh no I'm scared but you feel so you feel proud of yourself when you've done it and that's what I try and teach the kids as well so it's a good come home and tell them what you've done and it it's a nice feeling that is totally a friend of mine has got um she's named her like in a demon uh she's been on the podcast actually michelle i think it's about episode 27 uh around that sort of time um but she is nicknamed this inner voice gerard so whenever <laughs> it's got that feel like come on now michelle you can't do that oh really oh you're not good enough for you this she's like shut up gerard and uh, like he's popping out to play and it was so funny i was um putting something out there the other day um when I launched my 20 pound shop and I was really nervous like oh my goodness this is not what people do in my industry it feels a bit maverick but I'm gonna go for it and then somebody called Gerard followed me on Instagram no I was like thanks Gerard thanks for keeping me in check I'm not gonna follow you because you, you're gonna send me weird pictures of yourself I can just <laughs> tell by your profile picture but you know it's that you've got to kind of dance with it a little bit and go I see you but I'm doing it anyway Well, I think the other thing I employ a bit of a tactic is I think if I'm going to do something and I'm nervous about it, I I always think, well, in half an hour, it'll be done. Yes. And and that's it. It'll be done. And you don't have to worry about it then because you've done it. And actually, nine times out of ten, it goes well. Yes. And there's nothing more satisfying than ticking something off on a list, you know. That can be your nice little adrenaline hit for the day. You know, it's great stuff. One final question. Where would you like to be in five years' time? Well, I would really, really have liked to um, grow the business a bit further via Instagram and have more footfall. But the thing I've been really enjoying is helping. I've helped and I've invested in some new businesses in the city and I've really enjoyed a bit of coaching on that side and speaking I think that's something else I've enjoyed because I've found that women really like to hear your story and how you do the day-to-day and how you can manage being um a business person and a mum and try I've talked about lovely yeah (laughs) and the mum guilt I think people really appreciate you saying 
oh my god there is the mum guilt but actually as the kids grow older and they're teenagers they don't remember if they were at nursery a long day or they don't remember that and they they see your mum and they see what you're doing and I think that's something I'd like especially to new mums to say don't beat yourself up you're doing brilliantly and if you want to go to work great go to work yeah totally and I think it's those you know there are so many awful horror stories that you hear of people who don't care for their pet uh, for their children and you know are shabby and all the yeah. rest of it and the fact that you know we're consciously thinking about what good food we can put in their bellies or you know that make sure that yeah. they're comfy cozy at night you know there's all these sort of basic things and I think sometimes this pressure of being the perfect mum it's just not attainable I mean Oscar's going to be four on um, Monday and and I, uh, today we're recording on Friday, and I look back to four years ago that it took three and a half days to get him out into the world in terms of I had a three-day labour and then an emergency C-section. And, you know, even just doing the basic things of just getting a baby out, it's it's a big deal. And, you know, Huge. you are enough, you're doing enough and all of that. But if people want to come and visit, which I definitely do want to come and... Um, yeah, where, where should they go and share your, your social media links and all of that? That would be great. Yes. So we're um, Velvet Hove on Instagram. Um, the shop name is Velvet. We are in Hove. And we're also on Facebook. Um, our main channel is Instagram. So it would be lovely to come and say hello. And if people are visiting the area, just it just please come and see us it's a nice experience well I think it is and my customers tell me that too so um I think it's it's definitely an environment where you can relax and go shopping so. amazing and I will be that person where you're going Nikki we're closing now Nikki you need to leave I'll be like no but I want to stay I like it so we do much have, we had in a Christmas event this year we always do but this year we had a thousand people through the door wow. and I know we were <laughs> We were on our knees at the end of it. But the love from the local people, I mean, we did supply a lot of Prosecco, but it was just, <laughs> it was so rewarding. And I think that, I think in this day and age, that's what I keep going back to, is people like independent family businesses. So, um, yeah, come and see us. It'll be lovely, Nikki. Fantastic. Oh, Emma, I've absolutely love this and I yeah I just feel really inspired I love making the podcast and I'm so pleased that um you're in my my next batch of sharing these great stories it feels good to be back and not hot and sweaty and pregnant well, I think you're doing amazingly with such a little baby so oh, hats off to you thank you we shall see she might be a horror in a few months so um I'm not going to get too complacent no don't count your chicken <laughs> no exactly um thank you so much you've been a dream and um I I know everybody's going to love this episode and go over and visit the Instagram. It's fantastic. So thank you, Emma. See you soon. Wow. Wasn't Emma inspiring? What a great episode. I really loved learning from her. And I just love the way that she's not only reinvented what she's doing, but known how to build and change with the times. There's so much good stuff in there. I would love to know what you took away from it. And please come and tag Emma and I over on social media. Let us know where you're listening. And also let me know what you want more of or if you have a great guest that you think would be a fantastic fit for me to interview. I would love to hear your feedback. As always, please rate, review, subscribe, share with a pal and let's really get this podcast out to all the people who really need it. I really value your support. Thank you once again for listening and I'll catch you again soon with a brand new episode. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it and I would love to hear what you thought of the episode and share any takeaways with me. Come and find me across social media at Nikki Raby or you can visit the podcast page nikkiraby.com forward slash podcast.